the haunted Cliffside Retreat. In Colombia, there's a place called the Cliffside Retreat, which used to be a hotel called Del Salto. It's not like most hotels you know, though. Instead of people staying there for vacations, it's turned into a museum. But it's not just any museum. It's famous for being one of the spookiest places on Earth. The Cliffside Retreat was built a long time ago, in 1923, by a man named Carlos Arturo Tapias. He wanted to make a beautiful hotel with a great view of the Tequendama Falls. Everyone said the view was amazing, but there was something really scary about it too. You see, a lot of people who stayed at the hotel ended up doing something really sad. They jumped off the cliffs. That's why they called it the Hotel of the Leap. It's like they couldn't help but leap off, even though it meant they wouldn't survive. Some people say it's because of the view. It's so breathtaking that they forget to be careful. But others think there's something more to it, something spooky that makes people want to jump. There's an old story that goes way back. It's about the indigenous Muisca tribe who lived in the area a long, long time ago. When the Spanish colonizers came, the Muisca didn't want to be taken over. So instead of surrendering, they leaped off the cliffs to escape. That's why some people think the spirits of the Muisca still haunt the cliffs, making people feel like they need to jump. It's a really sad story, but it's also really scary. Now, the cliffside retreat isn't a place where people stay anymore. It's become a museum, a place where people come to learn about the history of the area and the spooky stories that surround it. But even though no one stays there overnight anymore, the stories of the people who leaped from the cliffs still echo through the halls. And if you listen closely, you might just hear the whispers of the Muisca spirits, warning you to be careful near the edge. The Mysterious Events of Ashley Street In the bustling college town of Ann Arbor, nestled among the University of Michigan's campus, stood a house on Ashley Street. It was an ordinary-looking house from the outside, but it held secrets that would chill the bones of anyone who dared to uncover them. The year was 1972, and on a fateful night, a group of University of Michigan students decided to host a party at the house on Ashley Street. Little did they know, this party would become the talk of campus for years to come. Among the guests was a 15-year-old girl, perhaps too young to be attending such an event. As the night wore on, she suddenly felt a strange chill creeping into her bones, despite the warmth of the crowded room. Ignoring the odd sensation, she sought refuge from the cold by venturing upstairs. But as she ascended the creaky staircase, a feeling of unease washed over her. The walls seemed to pulsate and shift, as if alive with some unseen energy. Trembling with fear, she pressed on, determined to escape the chill that seemed to follow her. As she reached the top of the stairs, she was met with a sight that would haunt her dreams for years to come. One of the walls of the house appeared to be moving undulating like a living, breathing entity. And from the darkness emerged a shadowy figure, its form twisted and distorted. Meanwhile, downstairs, chaos erupted as posters inexplicably leaped off the walls, crashing to the floor in a cacophony of sound. The startled partygoers could only watch in horror as the room descended into chaos. Fearing for her safety, the girl hurried back downstairs, her heart pounding in her chest. But as she reached the bottom step, she was overcome by a strange compulsion to speak words that were not her own. The drugs and addiction were my fault, she found herself saying, her voice trembling with emotion. I accept responsibility for that, but I was not that way deep down inside. I want to apologize to everyone involved for what I have done. The words hung in the air, their meaning lost on the bewildered onlookers. But to those who called the house on Ashley Street home, they struck a chord of recognition. For they knew the tragic tale of the man who had once lived there, a man whose life had been consumed by addiction. Before they had moved in, the house had been the residence of a troubled soul who had succumbed to the grip of heroin. His tragic demise had left a lingering presence in the walls, a ghostly reminder of the darkness that lurked within. In the aftermath of that fateful night, Whispers of the haunting on Ashley Street spread like wildfire across campus. Some claimed to have seen the ghostly figure lurking in the shadows, while others spoke of inexplicable occurrences within the house's walls. 
But despite the passage of time, the truth behind the mysterious events of Ashley Street remains shrouded in uncertainty. Perhaps the ghost of the past still lingers, trapped between worlds, forever haunting the memories of those who dare to tread its haunted halls. The haunting of La Parva Ski Resort. Nestled high in the Andes Mountains of Chile, La Parva Ski Resort is known for its breathtaking vistas and thrilling slopes. But beneath its picturesque facade lies a chilling tale that has haunted visitors for generations, the legend of the ghost of La Parva. According to local lore, the ghost is said to be the spirit of a young skier who met a tragic end on the mountain many years ago. His name was Alejandro, and he was an adventurous soul who lived for the thrill of the slopes. One fateful day, Alejandro ventured out alone, eager to conquer a treacherous run known as the Devil's Descent. But as he descended the steep slope, disaster struck. An avalanche swept down from the mountain, burying him beneath tons of snow and ice. Despite the efforts of rescue teams, Alejandro's body was never found. His disappearance sent shockwaves through the skiing community, and rumors began to spread of a restless spirit haunting the slopes of La Parva. Since that fateful day, skiers and snowboarders have reported eerie encounters with the ghost of Alejandro. Some claim to have seen a shadowy figure gliding down the slopes, its form blurred by the swirling snow. Others speak of hearing strange whispers echoing through the mountain air, as if the wind itself carried the voice of the lost skier. And on particularly cold nights, a mournful wail can be heard drifting down from the peaks, chilling those who dare to listen. Despite the ghostly sightings, La Parva Ski Resort remains a popular destination for thrill-seekers from around the world. But for those who know the legend, there is a palpable sense of unease that hangs in the air, a reminder of the tragic fate that befell Alejandro on the mountain. As the sun sets behind the towering peaks of the Andes, casting long shadows across the snow-covered slopes, one can't help but wonder if the ghost of La Parva still roams the mountain, searching for peace in the icy embrace 